Hello everyone, my name is Arunav and I think you have heard me in the Kafa Studio videos. So here I am today in front of you. So today in this video, I will be discussing about a solution of OLP test and also how to attempt a test. I think this will help you address these tests more effectively. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So in this video, I will discuss mini mock test 1. Here I will try and explain the context of the question. Let's take a look at the MSQ section first. In this first question, materials of these sculptures are asked. Though we have provided in the answer the name of these sculptures along with the material, but that is not meant to memorize. Isko ratne ki zarurat nahi hai. Just try and find their location. Search for them on the net. This exercise will automatically help you remember. That's why we have not provided the location in the answer also. And that is why I have mentioned in my earlier videos that right now these tests are not meant to test you, but to help you learn. Let's take a look at the next question. The word additive and subtractive is based on the presence of light. White light is basically the addition of all the color of light. And RGB format is based on light, hence it is called additive color. I have discussed this in color theory video in detail, you can refer that. The word subtractive is just to represent the opposite of additive. Let's take a look at next question. This is seed 2016 question. To attempt question on setting arrangement or question like this, read the question twice. First from the top and then from the bottom, that is in reverse order. And while doing that, keep scribbling the data on the paper. The point here is that the question has bombarded us with too much data to handle. So if we can arrange or sort that data on paper, it becomes easy to handle these questions. Let's try and make a table for this question. I have divided subjects and name this way. Now let's read the question and start filling the data in the table. Sucheta does not specialize in any area which Prashant specializes. Prashant specializes in more areas than Sumit. Now observe the first two sentences. No data is mentioned. Till now we do not know anything about the specialization. These lines are just comparison. Basically the data is in the last sentences. So let's start from the end. So the first sentence should be Sumit and Sanket share exactly one area of specialization which is not photography. So in this case we will mark N for photography for both Sumit and Sanket. Prashant specializes in typography and photography. So I'll mark Y for typo and photo for Prashant. Preetam, Sunita and exactly two other students specialize in ergonomics. Uh, I don't know about other two, but let's mark Y for Preetam and Sunita for Argo. Next line says, exactly three students specialize in photography. Can't say anything about this one, so I think I should just leave it right now. Next, Prashant specializes in more areas than Sumit. This means Sumit should have one Y because Prashant has two, but I am not sure which one. So let's move ahead. Sucheta does not specialize in any area in which Prashant specializes. And I know that Prashant specializes in typo and photo. This means Sucheta specializes in ergonomics. Now the question says Preetam and Sanket specialize in exactly the same areas. Now here we already know two conditions. One, Preetam specializes in ergonomics. So Sanket should also have Y in ergonomics. And second, Sumit and Sanket share exactly one area of specialization which is not photography. This means Sumit cannot have Y in photo. And we also know that Sumit specializes in less area than Prashant. But Sumit cannot specialize in ergonomics. Why? Because ergonomics already has four students. Thus, Sumit is left with only typo. And so is Sanket and Preetam. And now we can read the options. Option A says Preetam specializes in typography. And according to our table, this is correct. Preetam has Y in typography. Sucheta specializes in typography. This is wrong. Sanket specializes in ergonomics. Again, this is correct. And D, Sumit does not specialize in ergonomics is again correct. I hope you understood this. So now let's move to the next question. Heritage list. A heritage list by UNESCO is divided into two categories. Tangible, which includes monuments, archaeological sites, temples, etc. While intangible heritage list includes cultural intellectual property like customs, traditions, languages, etc. Now it is a long list and I am not recommending you to remember that. But by taking a look at them once in a while and understanding the fact that there is something called heritage list will be sufficient to answer one question in the exam. So this question was given keeping in mind that you come and revise these topics. Let's take a look at MCQ questions now. Now the first question, it is a GK based question and it is asking about the dark side of the moon. The dark side of the moon is that side which always faces away from the earth. And this happens because the rate of spin, that means rotation of the moon, is equal to its revolution around the earth. 
Now observe that in this single question, there are few other facts which you can use to improve your GK. Chandrayaan 2 mission and Sri Harikota launch site. If you want to prepare via test, read about them and make your notes. That would be the best way to prepare. Let's take a look at next question. This is an easy question. We will cover Indian painters in detail in separate video. But for now, let me tell you all the options. The first option is a painting by Nandalal Bose. Third is by Jamini Roy. And the last option D is by Amrita Shergil. And the correct answer for this one is B. Next question. In questions like these, never start solving the question at once. Observe these questions first. If you can identify some kind of symmetry in the figure, half work is done. Observe here, this section is the same as this section. So we will only count this part and double it. And for this middle section, it is quite easily visible. So it is easy to count this portion. Also try counting them in layers. So the key is to observe the figure first. Hope you understood. Now we have uploaded a video on dance form. Please refer that video. I'm sure you will be able to answer question on dance form after that. Let's take a look at the next question. This is a very recent updated logo. Generally, question on logo is based on important government institution or a very famous brand in general. Here, the question is important not only from logo point of view, but the institution for which this logo is made. Geographical indicators form the part of IPR, that is intellectual property rights. It refers to intellectual property that is creation of mind, such as literary artistic work, design, etc. You will read about IPR as one of the subjects in your design college and geographical indicators are part of IP. These tags are given to a product or commodity which are specific to a place, for example, Nagpur oranges, etc. Okay, now let's take a look at next question. I have discussed these sculptures in detail in our video. You can refer that video to understand this question. Even if you know the answer of this question, after attempting the test, make sure you refer option also. These can be used in future test also. So the point I was trying to make in this discussion was to take test as a source of information. These questions are coming to you after a lot of filters. Grasp it and digest it. Don't judge yourself at this stage of preparation. Just keep updating your knowledge base. I hope this discussion was helpful. I'll come back with more videos soon. Until then, keep practicing.